Hello. This is another statics example problem, statics tutorials. We would like to construct a free body diagram, FBD, of member AB. So here is our body, member AB, and we're asked to compute and include the numeric reactions at A and B. And um, we talked a little bit, I think, in a former tutorial, but even if this is not stated explicitly, it is implied when people give you numbers in the problem. All right, so we want to do a free body and our tool for turning this loading diagram into a free body is as follows. Make it a little lasso tool. I'm going to grab all this stuff here. I want to free the body from the support. So POW disconnected B, POW disconnected A. And I'm going to leave all this stuff here. OK, I want to grab all that good stuff and do it. Edit, copy, merged, edit, paste. And I'll put this little piece of our free body over to the right. Let's put another layer on top of that. OK. And of course, we have point B over at the right end of the beam. That is our pin ruler. OK. Um, now that we have freed the body from the supports, we need to add in the effects of the supports back on the body. And so I'm going to assume that A sub Y is um, going upward and not downward. I'm going to assume that B sub Y is also going upward and not downward. And it kind of goes without saying, like if there is not an X, Y Cartesian coordinate system provided, and it's a 2D planar problem, it's OK to assume those directions. And if you want to scratch that into your um, free body, of course, that's OK as well. All right, so we have constructed a free body. So this free body is in static equilibrium, or it has the ability to be in static equilibrium once I solve for these two unknowns. But we also need to do the numeric reactions. So what I want to do is take the area under the curve of this uniform distributed load. So this trapezoidal shape here. I want to take the area under the curve and turn that into some equivalent concentrated forces. Then I want to use those forces in my equations of equilibrium to solve for A sub Y and B sub Y. OK, get that out of there. And so to do that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually, let's see, merge this one down. I'm going to turn down the volume on that layer, put layer 5 on top. And so this is kind of what I want to do in this picture. So I want to do another free body. There is my beam. There is my body. So just as before, we can label these two ends, the two nodes as A and B. and I'd like to take the area that is under the rectangular portion of the trapezoid. So I want to break this up into this piece, this blue piece here. And then I want to also take into consideration this triangle up on top. So we'll do the rectangle first, and we'll do the triangle second. Okay, so that area under that rectangular curve, that rectangle has a height of six kips per foot right over here. And it has a length of nine feet. And the center of a mass of a rectangle is right smack in the middle of the beam. So let's go ahead and draw this. I'm gonna call this, um, I'm gonna call this one F sub two, just because I'm thinking ahead and I know the other force is going to be the, to the left of that, but um, just kind of go with me for now. We're going to call this force F sub two. It is the resultant force that is associated with the rectangular part of the area under the curve of this trapezoid. Let's write that expression over to the left. So F sub 2, that resultant force, that's going to be a W times L. My W is this distance from here to here. And notationally, you know, we could measure 
from the, the height of this vector, we can measure that vector as six kips per foot. Um, another common way that's used to designate that is you kind of point to a certain point and say that, okay, the height of that vector is six kips per foot. So in this diagram, I included this information two different ways to get you accustomed to seeing it both ways. Both are fine, both are correct. Let's plug this into our equation, six kips per foot and we need to multiply by a length of nine feet okay do a little cancellation da -ka -dun, da -ka -dun, and multiply that out to get 54 kips okay. add that to my diagram up above 54 kips and we know that that force is located halfway along the length of the beam. So half of the distance between A and B, in other words, half of nine feet, I'll just show that as 4.5 feet, the little single quote mark also means uh, feet, and um, show that on my diagram right there. All right, now we need another vector, and our second vector is going to tell us the area underneath the triangular part of the curve. And we know that the centroid of that triangle lies at the third point on the heavy end. And for this triangle, the heavy end is the left side of the triangle. So we want to put it about right here. And I'll call that F sub 1. We'll calculate it here presently. I'll go ahead and do the length since we're messing with that picture anyway. So we want to put it a third of the way over from the heavy side of the triangle. That's one third of nine feet or three feet from the left node. That is node A. Okay, let's write out the expression area under the curve. F sub 1 is equal to W L over 2. That is the triangle. Now, what do we want to use for W? Do we want to use 16? Do we want to use 6? Do we want to use 10? What's going on there? Well, we want this distance from here to here. Okay, so if you're given that as 10 kips per foot, you can run with it. Okay. Um, if you need to deduct six from 16 to figure out that that is 10 kips per foot, that works too. Either way you do it, you're going to have a height of the triangle of 10 kips per foot, a base of the triangle or a length of nine feet, just as before. And again, don't forget that two in the denominator, since you're taking the area of a triangle and not a rectangle. We got a little bit of unit cancellation to do here. In the numerator, 10 kips times nine equals 90 kips. 90 kips divided by two is equal to 45 kips. So I'm going to add that into my drawing right there. Okay, um, at this point in our calculation, we, I'm going to go ahead and mask out something really quickly. So I'm just going to take this calc, we finish with this piece of it, and I am going to mask that with white color there, add another layer on top. Okay, excellent. All right, um, we still need to figure out our unknowns. So we'll pop these back into our free body in order to put that in static equilibrium. There's A sub Y, there is B sub Y. And what equations of equilibrium do we have as our tools in the toolbox to solve for these unknowns? Well, there's only two equations that are going to help us make any progress. That is the summation of forces in the y direction equals zero. Summation of moments about any z axis is equal to zero. And I'm going to choose to do this one first. I'll choose to take the moment about the z axis coming out of the page that that is coincident at point A over here. OK, 
Okay, so we're going to take the moments about that axis. And after that, we will jump into our other equation, sum of forces in the y direction equals zero, and that will allow us to solve for our other unknown. Two unknowns, two equations, that math, math works out. Excuse me. Okay, let's do a summation of moments. And this is where, excuse me, this is where it's conventional to swap up the notation. So this is showing a Z direction. And now here, most people would put an A there to say that that is the Z direction axis that is at point A, set that equal to zero. Now let's tally up the number of terms in this moment equation. I've got 45 kips at three feet. I have 54 kips at 4.5 feet. And I've got B sub Y at nine feet. Okay, first term, 45 kips, distance of three feet. We'll come do the signs in a minute. Next term, 54 kips. Distance is 4.5 feet, do the sign in a minute. Last term, B sub Y, distance of nine feet. Sign in a minute, set that all equal to zero. All right, to get the signs, there's two ways to do this. There's the old fashioned two dimensional way in which you ask yourself, does each force tend to rotate the body clockwise or counterclockwise about A? If the answer is counterclockwise, that term in the moment summation gets a positive sign. If the answer is clockwise, it gets a negative sign. Okay, so if you want to do it that way, we can see that F sub 1 tends to rotate the body clockwise about A. F sub 2 tends to rotate the body clockwise about A and B sub Y tends to rotate the body counterclockwise about A. And of course, A sub Y is coincident with A. So that's why that term doesn't appear in our moment formulation at all. Okay, so if we were to use this kind of 2D method, you could be like, okay, this is clockwise, negative, clockwise, negative, counterclockwise, positive, but I also want you to start thinking in 3D. Let me clean this up for you for a second. All right, and the way to think in 3D is as follows. Use your right hand. Use your right hand. Curl the fingers of your right hand to match that rotation of the 45 kips about point A. Do you see how your right thumb is pointing down or into the screen? That is negative. So thumbs down negative for F sub 1, thumbs down negative for F sub 2, thumbs up positive for B sub Y. So we get a minus, a minus, and a plus like that. Two ways to think through it, kind of a 2D method, and then becoming a little more sophisticated, getting ready to do this in 3D. Um, calculator time. So I would put this into my calculator as one fluid operation. So what I would do is I was open calculator and say minus 45 times 3 minus 54 times 4.5. I would take that and just do a times negative one, which is the equivalent of moving it to the right side of the equation. And then my last operation would be divide by nine. Go ahead and do that on your own. Pause the video if you would, if you need to do so, and you will get B sub Y is equal to 42 kips or kilopounds. K again is a kip or a kilopound. And that means it is equal to 1,000 pound forces or pounds. Okay. Okay. All right. So we've got B sub Y. That is looking good. We got a positive sign out of our formulation, and all that tells us 
all that tells us is that the direction that we assumed here, which was up, is correct. And the best way to be emphatic about that sign convention is just to add an arrow next to your answer. Okay, hey, we've got one of our two unknowns, the other one we can just do sum of forces. Now, if you wanted to do a second moment summation, you could do that, but um, I would be inclined to do a force summation. So I'll do that one, summation of forces in the y direction equals zero. Do my little accounting thing. How many terms do I have? One, two, three, and four. And the reason why I do these little accounting checks is because just omitting a term is a really, really common error. And then you get the completely wrong answer. So just kind of ask yourself, how many terms should I have in my equation? Put it together and then spot check, do I have four terms there? Um, and then you're feeling pretty good that you didn't accidentally omit something. Okay, A sub Y is our unknown. It's pointing up in our picture, so we'll give it a positive. B sub Y we just solved, so I'll plug in 42 kips. It's pointing up, positive. F sub 1, 45 kips, it's pointing down negative. F sub 2, 54 kips, it's pointing down negative. Sum all of that up, set it equal to zero. Run that through your calculator and you will get the reaction at A of 57 kips. We got a positive sign. The positive sign reinforces the direction of the vector that we drew on the picture. Final answers need some kind of ornamentation. That could be a box, like underline, whatever. Um, but go ahead and box that up. Those are the best way to express those answers. Alternatively, you could express your final answer in this manner. I'm going to go ahead and do another layer. I'm going to put white ink all over my screen. Just make a little bit of it peek through, add a layer. Make this black. Okay, so this could be another way to kind of report your final answer to this problem. A sub y, we calculated that as 57 kips. B sub y, we calculated that as 42 kips. And instead of doing the two resultant forces, I'm just going to put this back in its original form. So put it back into a trapezoidal load. Up here, I had 16 kips per foot. Down here, I had six kips per foot. That's a line load or a force intensity, force per distance. Go ahead and turn this up all the way. And that is a free body that is in static equilibrium. And that is essentially the solution um, to the problem we just worked. Common questions. Can I also show these two resultant forces in my solution? Sure. Any statically equivalent system that is in static equilibrium would be a correct response to the prompt as given. All right, I hope that was helpful to you. Thanks for stopping by my channel.